Hello and welcome, this is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today we have a collaboration hop featuring products from This Calls for Confetti, one of the Kendra's Card Challenge 13 super sponsors. Some members of the video team will be sharing projects made with products from This Calls for Confetti using the Kendra's Card Challenge 13 sketches. And I'll be sharing how to make an Easter shaker card using rub-on transfers, vellum, and pattern paper using sketch number 14. And this is a giveaway hop, so stay tuned for details on how to enter and have a chance to win a digital download prize from me. This Calls for Confetti sent me and other members of the video team some goodies to create with, and these are the products that I'll be using for my card today. I'll show you what I have here. These are Easter rub-on transfers, and there's quite a few in here, and they come in both gold and white, and I have to apologize for the glare. But on the back, there are instructions on how to use the transfers. And then there is this clay confetti mix. This is called Easter, and it includes little bunnies and carrots, some flowers, and other bits. And then there's also this Easter egg set of dies and stencils. There are two separate dies. Let me see if I can get this open and show you. It's kind of stuck. Hold on a second. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there is one large egg and a small egg. And then there's two stencils, one large and one small. So the same size as the dies. And this is so you can color them in. And then I also have this pattern paper pack called Painted Patterns, and there are 12 different designs. There's some dots and stripes and squares in four different colors. So we've got the pink, the yellow, the lime green, and then also a light blue. So you get two of each, so a total of 24 single-sided sheets. I'll have a list of all these supplies down in the description box along with links in case you're interested in purchasing any of these items. These are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I receive a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. In case you're not familiar with my quarterly card making challenges, I offer a free PDF printable with cutting guides for six sheets of six by six pattern paper, where you can make 15 cards using the sketches that are also provided in the printable. If you join the challenge and post your cards on social media, you can have a chance to win one of many prizes valued at over $1,000 from over 20 different companies, including this cause for confetti. They have generously offered a monthly confetti mix prize plus a $25 gift certificate as a quarterly prize. For more information about the challenge, I will link the challenge 13 introduction video above and in the description box below, which explains more about it and how to enter to win the challenge prizes. So let's go ahead and get started. I've selected three of the striped pattern papers in pink, yellow, and green from the paper pad. And I have an A2 size panel along with three different colors of Distress Oxide inks, Kitsch Flamingo, Squeeze Lemonade, and Twisted Citron. I thought these were the closest to the colors in the paper. But I'm gonna do an ink blended background. And so I'm starting with the Kitsch Flamingo and I'm using the domed foam applicators and I'm just gonna start in the corner because I wanna blend these colors at a diagonal. Now it's been a while since I've done any kind of ink blending and so I'm kind of out of practice, but I really enjoy doing this, but I am definitely not an expert by any means. But I will say that this cardstock is amazing for this. It is super smooth and the colors are going on really nicely. But after adding that Kitsch Flamingo, I brought in the Squeeze Lemonade and the next I'll be adding in the Twisted Citron. Now this Twisted Citron ink pad, I've had trouble with it, it leaks a lot and it makes a mess every time I use it. So I have to clean off this edge of the ink pad a little bit and it's really saturated. So I definitely need to blot off some of this ink first, but I'm putting this straight down in the middle at a diagonal. I almost feel like this green needs to be a little bit darker, but I don't think I have a shade that's the right shade to match the paper. So after the green, I'm bringing back the yellow on the other side of the green and then adding, I'm gonna add the pink again in the other corner. I'm not really, really liking the green at this point, but most of it will be covered by my Easter egg anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I thought about bringing in the blue color, but I don't really need a fourth color with the idea that I have in my head. But this ink blending is definitely not perfect, like I said. A lot of it will be covered up. So after getting all of these colors on here, I, I really want that pink to be darker, so you see I keep adding more to that. So next, I'm just going to take my water bottle and spritz on some water. 
and then I'm going to pat it dry with a paper towel and then set it aside to dry for a bit. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using sketch number 14. So I'm going to cut some strips from the pink and yellow papers for both of the corners. And I'm going to use the green stripes for my egg. So I want the stripes to face the same way as the stripes on the strips. <laughs> so I'm cutting the large egg out of the pattern paper at this angle using the largest egg die. And I'm taping this die in place with some low tack mint tape. And I'll run this through my die cutting machine. Initially, I thought I could just cut one strip from each of the colors and use what I cut off for the other side but it wasn't quite long enough so I ended up having to cut two more half inch strips from each of the colors but I cut out the large egg from the green pattern paper but I forgot about cutting out the smaller egg from the center to make my shaker so I'll do that but my idea is that these strips are going in the corners and I want to cut this panel to be just a little bit smaller than an A2 size. So I'm going to use this die with a stitched edge to cut this out. So before I do that I want to glue down my strips and then I'll trim off the strips that are hanging over the side and then run it through my die cutting machine. Now I'm going to line up the strips using the grid lines on my mat to make sure that I glue the other diagonal strips at the same angle. And I'm going to let this dry for a minute and while I do I'm going to switch over to the shaker part of the card. Now I originally thought I'd use acetate but I have this really pretty vellum with polka dots and I thought it would be cute to use that instead. So I cut that off camera and then I cut the edges of the strips off and placed the rectangle die on top and I ran it through my die cutting machine. So now I'm going to use these stencils and add a little bit of ink along the edges to help it look more dimensional. And I have this ink by Catherine Pooler, and I thought it was pretty close um, to that green, and it's called Lime Ricky, and I wasn't sure how this would work with those Distress Oxides. I probably should have used this instead, but I'm using my Altenew Ultra Sticky Grid Mat from my stamp wheel to hold the stencil and my paper in place, while I just add a little bit of the ink along the edges, this time using a blending brush. And I went ahead and colored the edges of the smaller egg too, and then I cut that out. Now I'm going to let this dry a bit and switch over to the rub-on transfer. Now this is new to me, but I'll be adding this on top of the polka dot vellum. And I don't think the white will show up, so I'm just going to go with the gold. Now I used the pattern paper egg to help me see how much room I have in the middle. I definitely can't uh, use the larger transfers, but the directions say to carefully cut out the transfer and then peel off the protective backing and place the image facing up on your project surface. So I want to make sure I know where to put this. So I tape the vellum piece to the egg. And then now it says to take care when positioning because it can easily tear. It says to use the popsicle stick or your fingers to gently rub the image onto your product. I've never done this before, so I don't know if I'm applying enough pressure or not, but we will see. While I do this, I'll tell you how to enter the giveaway for this hop. For a chance to win a digital download from me, you'll complete the form that's linked in the description box below, and then hop along and watch the other videos in the playlist. You can complete the form for each video that you watch for more chances to win, but you'll want to do this on March 15th of 2024, which just happens to be my birthday, but the winner will be randomly chosen and announced on my community tab. So make sure you're a subscriber and have those notifications turned on so you don't miss any of my posts. The image looks like it transferred perfectly. This was so easy and I'm definitely going to have to use rub on transfers more often. I have my panel cut out and it has a nice stitched border and so now I need to cut out some foam for the shaker part of the card. And I have this scrap piece of foam with adhesive on one side. I know it's a funky shape but the egg fits just right in this little triangle corner here. So I taped it down and then in order to get the smaller egg in the right place it needs to be cut out exactly as it is on the pattern paper piece. So I'm using the larger egg as a guide to place the small egg die on top of that and then trace the inside edge with my pencil so I'll, I'll know where to put or where to line it up. So I'm going to hang on to the smaller egg foam piece so I can use it later. Now I need to attach the vellum piece to the back of the large egg. So I'm just adding some glue on the back of that pattern paper and then I added glue on the back of the vellum to glue to the top of the foam piece. Originally I thought I would glue the smaller egg on the inside directly onto the panel so that it would look like a continuous pattern but I think that I like it better with the green color, the, the blended background showing through the panel. 
think it's kind of hard to see with uh, the stripes behind it so I ended up just not using that so I glued down my panel to a white card base and then next I added the shaker bits to the top of the panel I'm just trying to add them in the center so that they don't get in the way of the foam part of the egg piece and so before putting that egg down I rubbed my anti-static powder bag along the inside edge of that egg to keep the pieces from sticking and then I removed the adhesive backing from the shaker egg and I also added some liquid glue to make sure that it sticks well I don't know that the adhesive is really that great I've had this fun foam for a while and I don't think it's that strong but the shaker bits do have some room to move around in there even though you can't see all of the pretty detail of those clay Easter confetti pieces you can still see the pretty colors and it sounds really cool to embellish the card I added some pale yellow colored pearls and also some gold love from Lizzie peel off stickers along the edges of those pattern paper strips this will help to tie in the gold from the rub-on transfer but these strips would have been much easier to add before I glued it down to the card base but it's an afterthought it definitely adds to the card and I love how this turned out I hope you do too you have to let me know what you think down in the comments below and also tell me if you've ever made a shaker card using vellum there's still time to join the challenge this quarter you have until March 31st to get photos of your cards uploaded to the Kendra's card challenges Facebook group to enter I'll have a link to the Facebook group in the description box as well I'd like to thank this cause for confetti for being a prize sponsor and for sending the team some products to create with these were such fun products and I absolutely love how this turned out I also want to thank my patrons shown here patrons receive extra benefits and perks as part of my membership program including monthly digital downloads card making kits and more so for more information visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's card challenges You'll find the playlist of all of the videos in this hop down in the description box. So I hope you'll check out all of the other videos by the super talented designers to get more card making inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.